Hi, it's Kathy Cross again, and I am back with uh, my YouTube channel, Geriatric Care One, and we have been doing the concierge family and the concierge client, and this playlist. Um, and you can go back and watch a lot of the uh, the YouTubes. And um, we just did uh, what you should do it, when you have a meeting after your geriatric assessment, which would be your functional and your uh, psychosocial. And then after that meeting, you start monitoring. And monitoring is when you go to the client's home and you go on a regular basis, usually every week, sometimes every two weeks if it's not that intense a, con a case. And all concierge cases are intense, but they have lower levels of intensity. You might have a concierge client that is non-medical care. And so really, um, you know, you really only need to go every two weeks. Um, but during the monitoring visit, no matter how often it is, you have to be proactive, uh, you know, uh, again, ahead of the ball when you go there. Um, you're going to use, at any monitoring visit, you're going to use a database, a client database. That database is going to have a monitoring form in it with, you know, pre-filled pre, pre out, uh, you know, things that you're going to look at. Uh, you know, you're going to look at, uh, you know, nutrition, you're going to look at psychosocial problems, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what you want to do is after you uh, make that visit, um, you, you really want to document up the yin yang. And this is because again, and I said this in the last uh, YouTube, you, you know, you've got to be ahead of the ball and you really have to assume that this is a very legit, litigious family. It's also that any mistake you make because they're blamers and you can go back and see who I used as an analogy of, of a blamer, <laughs> a famous presidential candidate. Uh, <laughs> You want to be able to uh, document up the yin yang, and so uh, you want to uh, put in your case notes right away. And you should have this uh, form on uh, on a you know a piece of software, but it should be able to be on your phone or on a you know not on a laptop. But you should be able to do it right away. You should get a software program that can go to uh, phones, that can go to iPads that you can document and bill in the field. And so you want to put service notes in right away, not just the, you know, the, the standard standardized uh, checkoff list that you're going to have. Um, and you want to cover everything that happened with staff, everything that happened with a client. And uh, another thing that you want to look at is uh, every month you want to do a monthly report. And I'm really, really a, a stickler about this. Monthly reports are fabulous. I did them for 25 years. Hmm. And what it gives you the ability to do is summarize each week of visiting and, uh, you know, condense it into a month. And then if you go to court, which I, again, I'm repeating myself, it's not if, it's when, um, or you have any questions, it gives you this fast flash way of mm -hmm. finding anything because you just go through the, the monthly reports. Mm -hmm. And you always start with Mrs. Hurricane, that's who I refer to all the time, had a blank, blank month. Mrs. Tornado had a blank, blank month. And so you stop at the bad, Mrs. Hurricane had a bad month, and you're usually gonna find the problems in there. It's just a great way of finding information rather than go through every single note. But monthly reports are absolutely imperative to do with the, uh, entitled family, the concierge family, and, you know, even, uh, you know, do them every week. And, you know, you get paid for this. This is your job. I know you think, oh my God, don't think, oh my God. Think you'll make more money and think you're going to cover yourself if you go to court. So if they ask you to do a monthly report each week, do it, do a weekly report. Uh, and what the monthly report also does is give you a way of playing with the same deck of cards and you are dealing so that you have this crazed family where everybody's got a different opinion of reality and they're all fighting over it and you are the one that defines reality because you're going every week, you're writing a monthly report and these are the problems. And that counts with court and it counts with the family. It can really help to uh, organize a family. Um, you, and again, I've said this before, be aware of conflicting needs, be aware of demands, put all that down. And then during the visit, 
um, you know, both the adult children and the older person were going to have implicit and explicit requests, and you need to listen carefully for that. Uh, um, you know, they may just be explicit requests. You know, they want you to be on call every Saturday and Sunday. You need to be really clear about that uh, because they will be calling you every Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and implicit requests may be, uh, well, you know, I, I don't know how, I don't have enough groceries in the house and I really need some, uh, you know, pink, pink tissues. They're the ones I like. I don't know how I'm going to get them. Don't go out and get the tissues. <laughs> uh, because they're really used. I had a mother-in-law. She's a lovely person, but she was a Southern Belle. And, uh, it, you know, um, she, instead of saying pass the salt, she'd say, oh, does anybody see the salt? <laughs> the whole family laughed about that always. <laughs> um, so the explicit requests. Um, and it's better really to be aware of all the family's needs because again, you are dealing with a whole family process and you really want to be able to, uh, you know, hear everyone in the family, even if, you know, there are difficult opinions because your client is the older person. The only way you can really move forward with that client is to balance the family in, a, you know, a little bit to go forward to get the right amount of care. Boundaries that you need to have, and I've talked about this before in your visit, uh, again, uh, no French cuisine. Uh, if somebody needs to change, if your care provider needs to change diapers, this is the easiest way to say this. Uh, you know, a gourmet chef, you know, but you know, somebody who can change diapers. Uh, no models who can operate a Hoyer lift. It's not possible. And do you think I'm making this up? Of course I'm not. I worked in Pebble Beach for 25 years. It's, you can't believe what people ask for. You have to be able to have boundaries uh, when it comes to level of care. So I will see you next time. Uh, go to my website, kathypress.com, and there's a new tab called Webinar, and you can look at the last two webinars that I've done, and uh, have a wonderful day.